Hi you guys, I'm so excited. Today I'm going to show you how I made this box. This I call it the tower box. Super, super cute and it has this pillow like uh, lid. So I'm going to show you, this is super easy to make. Anybody can make it. Now this box, I finished it yesterday and I did not film it, but today we are going to make two boxes, not just one. So today we will be making I have them right here. I just finished putting uh, the oil on them. So they are still wet. Today we'll be making this one. This one is from Walnut and Canary. So this is what is looking this box. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So this is one box we'll be making today. And then the other one is this Walnut and Canary. So this one is super, super cute as well. Look at that grain, look at the top. The grain is beautiful, lots of figure. And I really like this style of boxes. So that's what we'll be doing today. We will be making these two boxes over here. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now for the two boxes, this is where I will start with. I have this plank over here. It's about 24 inches long. And the width of this one, it's about four and a quarter inches. So this is a plank of walnut and about three quarter inch from the bottom. I did cut uh, into the walnut and I added a strip of canary wood just to add some interest. So. This was the plank of walnut, cut a strip off, insert this canary wood and glue it back together. For the other box, I had a strip of canary wood. Same thing I cut, this is about one inch from the bottom. I cut a slice off and then I inserted some walnut and glue it back together. This one is narrower, this one it's about three and a quarter inches, which I think will be perfect for the size of this box. And like I said, this is about four and a quarter, which I think is too tall. It's gonna be almost square, but not quite square. So I'll have to take this down to about three and a quarter. Otherwise, I feel like it's gonna look disproportional. It's gonna look more like a shoe box. It's not gonna have a nice aesthetic look. So what I will do now, I already ran this uh, guys through the drum sander with 180 um, sandpaper, just to make it smooth. So I don't have to do so much hand sanding. And what I will do is clean up the edge here on the bottom and then also clean the top on this one. And then for this one, I will clean the bottom and then make it more narrow, make it bring it down to like three and a quarter, three and a half inches. So those will be the two planks that we'll be making the boxes from. For the lid, I have this leftover beautiful piece of walnut that I have left over from a charcuterie board that I made. And it has this crazy grain like figure on it. It's like curly walnut. Um, when it has a finish on it, it's really, really beautiful. So this is a little piece that I have left from that walnut and we'll make both lids from this one. And then for the handles, I glue together some canary wood with a strip of walnut and we'll make the handles out of that. For the bottom of the boxes, I usually like to put a quarter inch material on the bottom. I don't like to use one eighth inch because I feel like it's too hollow. So when you touch it, it has that cheap feeling that is, you know, very flimsy. Um, however, I do not have any quarter inch walnut right now and I don't feel like re it. I do have some quarter inch uh, plywood that is uh, veneered with walnut, but I really don't wanna use plywood for these boxes. I wanna use solid wood. So I have this piece over here. It's thicker than one eight, but it's thinner than a quarter. So we'll make the bottom out of this that I just re from, uh, you know, blank of walnut. So we'll do the bottoms out of that. But first things first, go into the table saw, clean up the edges and bring this down to the width of this one over here. So that's what I'll be doing first. You guys saw me using, instead of the push stick, I used this chunk of wood. And this works really, really well. I really love using this kind of push sticks. I put um, sandpaper on the bottom, so it has really good grip. And I feel like it's so much safer than these plastic ones. This ones I'm always afraid that if I accidentally run it into the blade, it's gonna shatter into a million pieces and you know kill me. Where this one, it's wood. So if I did touch the blade with it, it will just go right through it. So, what's the next step? 
the next step is um, the next step now is to make a groove for the bottom panel to sit in and I'm gonna do this now when this is on one long piece because it makes it so much easier you make one groove then they all lined up when you put together the box I could do the same thing with the rabbit but because I don't have a proper 45 degree sled yet for the new table saw I will be using my old sled that I kind of modified and it's not perfect and it gives me a lot of tear out the way I modified it I'll show you when we get to that and because of that I don't want to get so much tear out into the rabbit because you will see it, it will be on the top so I'll cut this into pieces and then make the rabbit but first we will make one groove on the bottom and make sure that our bottom panel is going to fit into it so let's do that now I am going to set up my blade to about about a half of the width of my board maybe a little bit less and then I'm going to put the fence about a quarter inch from the blade all right that should be good and now I'll be running this board through I should see which part I want it to be the inside of the box and I think I'll make that part inside so I'll be running it through and then I'll move the fence a little bit away and do another pass just until my panel fits into it so I'll do that with both boards Now here, here is why I didn't want to make that rabbit um, in the beginning. I'll show you my sled because this one was set up for my contractor saw for DeWalt. It was set up perfectly to do 45 degree miters and then I adjusted to, to fit this table but you see now this piece over here it's loose. It's completely broken. I'll show you from the back of it. And because of this, this causes a lot of tear out. So, I'm going to cut the pieces first, then do the rabbit. And I set the block for five inches from the curve. So, I'll be making a five inch square box. Now, because I want my grain to kind of continue, the way I'll be doing this is first, I'll be cutting um, the edge to determine a 45 degree angle. Then I'll flip my board, push it against the stop block, make another cut. Then I'll have to cut the edge again so the grain will continue and I get the angle in the same direction. And then I'll flip it, push it against the block and cut again and so on. That will make sense when I do it. I don't know if you guys caught that on camera, but I just made a big mistake and that is that I cut my miters in the wrong direction. As you can see, now my groove for the bottom panel is on the outside of the box instead of the inside. So, um, I can do one of the two things. I can either cut the miters off and do the miters in the other direction, so that way the bottom panel stays there. Or I can cut off the, the whole bottom portion and put a new groove on the correct side. I do not want to cut the miters because that will make my box way too small. So it's not going to be big enough to put anything in it if I do that. So I think what I need to do is just cut this bottom part off and then put a groove on the inside of the box where 
you know, it should be. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right. So I fixed the groove. Now it's on the correct side. So as you can see, as the miter goes like this, the groove is on the inside. And what we need to do now is create a rabbit on the top for the lid to sit on. To do that, let me move you around. To do that, I set my blade. It's still about halfway through the thickness of the material. So I'll be running this like this, standing up, and then I'll run it like this, and hopefully we'll get a beautiful rabbit. Let me double check. I think I'm gonna move the fence just a little bit further. All right, so now we have our walls of the box. We have our miters, we have our slot for the bottom, and then we have our rabbit that this top will be sitting on. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, in one of the clips when I cut these parts, I did put some blue tape and I numbered them, and that just makes it easier for me to align the grain so I will know that uh, you know this three comes after two, and if I put them together, the, let me see. The grain continues because that's the order I cut them from. So it just makes it a little bit easier. Now I'm going to use some blue tape to put these guys together and measure and cut the bottom panel to fit into the groove. Let's go do that. First thing I will do is clamp a straight edge to my table. That just makes me align things a lot easier. So I'm just going to clamp it. Then I have my pieces, let's see, two, three, four, one. So there they are. And now, let's see. They will line up like this. And I'll put them against my straight edge. That should make things a lot easier. Now, because this is solid wood, I will allow for some wood movement. It's not going to move much. It's very thin, so it's not going to be too much wood movement. But um, let me see if I can bring you in closer. So you see when I put this into the panel, so if this one is flush here, then it gives me about an eighth of an inch over here. So that's how much I will allow for wood movement. You can leave a little bit more, that's okay. But like I said, this is not going to expand too much. It's gonna be a very small piece. So I have this side, now I have to cut this size. So I'm just going to go and mark it and then cut it. We'll do a little dry test run here just to make sure that everything looks good. The miter looks good. The panel fits beautiful. Now, before I put the glue on, I want to put some blue tape. And this will just make my glue up clean up a lot easier. All right, so we have our blue tape. Time to glue it up. I'm going to use, let's see. I'm going to use Tide Pound. Type on to dark wood glue for this because we're working with dark wood and I think that'll be a better choice. And I'll be using one of these um, acid brushes to spread the glue. Things are looking great. I did one more blue tape on this end. All right, things are looking beautiful. Wipe the glue squeeze out. And this is what is looking And the, am I recording? I can't even see what you're seeing, I'm recording. So you see the glue squeeze out, you see it in the corners, but that is going to make it easy to clean up because, well, we put the blue tape. 
So, uh, let's see. I'm going to pull out the blue tapes gently. And this is what our joints look like after I remove the blue tape. And now I will be removing the glue from the corners. And for that, I am using a straw that I cut at an angle. And this is going to allow me to easily pick up all that glue from the cracks. Now it's time to put on some clamps. Make sure it dries square. And then I'll be gluing the other one. And I will be letting it sit overnight. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll send them. We'll make the lid, all that good stuff. So I'll be putting two clamps on each box, the opposite corners, and then I'll be putting these other clamps to keep the miters closed. So each box is going to have two corner clamps like this in the opposite corners. And then it's going to have these clamps to hold the miters closed. And I'm going to put two of these clamps per corner. So it's going to look something like this. And these guys really hold the joint close and make sure that the miter stays nice. Hey you guys here we are the next morning and last night i came into the shop and took the clamps off the boxes give them a good sending um, looked to see if there's any places that needed to be fixed for example on the joints there there was a little bit of you know little gaps so i put some glue and sent it over and that just smoothed everything perfectly the same thing on the bottom so i fixed all those things um sent the boxes and then for the handles, remember the strip that I showed you in the beginning that I glued together some canary wood with walnut. I trimmed it to width, which is about one inch. And then I cut a slice off of it. I made sure about, I have about half and half, half canary, half walnut. So I cut a small slice of it. And then I used a hand plane to give it these chamfers on the top. So that's, handles are pretty much done. Now I have about 30 minutes uh, on the shop before I have to go get my hair done. So I figure we'll do the lid and then when I come back, we will um, put a finish on it. So I have this highly figured walnut that I use for a charcuterie board. I showed it to you in the beginning and we should be able to make both lids from this. This is three quarter inch thick. You wanna work with thicker material because we will do that raised panel look where we do a heavy chamfer on it. And uh, so we need the thickness of it. 
I am going to make the canary box lid first. So I'm going to measure and cut this square. And uh, then I'll show you how I do the chamfer. So I cut the lid to fit into the box uh, rabbit, just like that. And now what I need to do is mark the center of this so I know where to put this little handles. So to do that, I need a straight edge. And I'm just going to measure corner to corner, make a little mark in the middle. So we'll know that is the center of that. Double check. This has always been my problem, putting the handle right in the middle. Finally came up with the solution. So that one is marked. Now it's time to mark this one. All right. Now that we have the center marked, I'm going to take it to the drill press and I'm going to make a quarter inch uh, hole where I will put a dowel and this will be a hole in the middle of this and have a dowel and then that's how we will attach these guys in there. So I need to make the hole now before I pillow this up because then it will be a little bit harder. So let's go to the drill press. All right, now we have the center marked on these um, lids. It's time to go put that heavy chamfer on the lids to make that pillowing, cake, uh, pillowing look. So I'm gonna do that at the table saw. And what I will do is I will angle my table saw at 15 degrees. So I'll be cutting this at 15 degrees. And first I have to mark, let's see. First I have to mark where do I want that chamfer to start. So I'll show you what I'm looking at. So I need to mark where do I want that chamfer to start to create that pillowing effect. And I want this part on the bottom not to be flush with the box. I want it to stick out a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe around right over there I want to start it. So I put a little mark. I don't know if you can see it. Just above. And I'll do the same thing in here. So this one, I want it to start a little bit higher. So just somewhere around there. I'll be using this router jig to hold my piece in place. And let's see. This thing fits in there. I'll sandwich it in. That way it stays in place. So you see, I don't even have to hold it. That thing gets, well, I like guess kind of secure in there. But it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to clamp it again in there. This is what we got with our first cut and I think we need to move the fence a little bit closer so we get more of an angle there. So that is great. I want about this much reveal uh, but the blade was not high enough so I'm going to raise the blade then cut this and then I'll do the same with all the other sides. So this is what our lids look like so far. I think it's beautiful. And then this one, this is what it looks like over here. Now I'm going to give it some good sanding and then we will use a small dowel and glue the handle on top. Now it's my favorite part of making a box and that is putting on a finish. I thought really hard on which finish will work best for these two boxes and I determined I am going to go with Tango L. 
Now, this is polymerized tongue oil. This is the polymerized tongue oil sealer. So I'll be using this one first. So I'll do a coat of this now. Then tomorrow morning, I'll put another coat of this. You leave it in for five to 10 minutes, wipe it off. So it will be two coats of this. And then a few days later, I'll come back and add this other tongue oil, put a coat of this high luster uh, polymerized tongue oil. Now this is polymerized tongue oil. If you do not know what this is, this is tongue oil that was pure just like this one over here. The problem with pure tongue oil, it takes weeks, weeks to uh, dry. So it's a little bit more difficult to work with just because you have to wait so long between coats. And it is thicker, you do have to thin it out. Pure tongue oil, you should thin it 50-50 with a thinner. If you're making cutting boards or food items, you'll probably want to thin it with some citrus solvent because it's food grade and all natural. If you're doing it for furniture boxes and so on, you can use mineral spirits or any thinner you want. So this one, you have to thin it because it is truly pure, but it does take a long time to dry. Now, polymerized tongue oil, it's the same pure tongue oil that went through a process of heating and then keep it at a certain temperature for a period of time and then cooling it down. And what happens is, um, it makes it so it dries a lot faster. So this polymerized tongue oil, it will be dry by tomorrow. And uh, in this process of polymerization, this thickens quite a bit, it becomes this goopy kind of thing, and then they thin it out so you can have it in a workable oil form again. So this is polymerized tongue oil that is very thin. The, that's why it's called the sealer. It's a little bit thinned out more than the other one that is the high luster. So this one will absorb deeper into the wood, where the other one, it's a little bit thicker, so it will be still penetrating deep into the wood, but not as much as this one. So I wanna put two coats of this, so it really penetrates and protects the wood from within. And then I'm going to put the other one on top as a third coat. Now, I have a sample wood here that I was uh, doing yesterday, just to show it to you guys, it's some walnut. And on this side, I put two coats of tongue oil and you can see how deep it penetrates. That's from two coats. And then on this other side, I use uh, Armor Seal, which is an oil-based poly. And you can see the poly just sits on the top. It doesn't really penetrate the wood like uh, tongue oil will do. And the reason why I chose the tongue oil because we have that really figured walnut on the top of the lid, so I want to bring that out. And tongue oil, it's the best when it comes to figure wood to bring out that grain. So that's what I decided I will use and that's what we'll do. And now you know the difference between polymerized tongue oil and the pure tongue oil. Now this one, it's technically, they call it pure polymerized tongue oil, but like I said, they do add some thinners to it to make it, in a, you know, thin oily form again. Now to apply it, I'll be using this uh, scratch pads. I love using this for putting finish on boxes and so on. The reason why I like them is because they are not abrasive yet. They're still, you know, a little abrasive. So it kind of burnishes the wood and makes it a little bit softer. And also they don't absorb a lot of finish. If you just take a t-shirt and you dump it, dunk it in oil and put a finish on, a lot of that finish is gonna get absorbed into your material and you're wasting material. So that's why I like using these guys. Also these guys, because they are so porous, it will dry a little bit faster. And when you work with well oil finishes, you have to be super careful on how you dispose of your rags. Because these guys, any oil finish, it will be self-combustible. That means once they are drying, uh, they are producing heat and they can really start the fire. So something like this will dry a lot faster than a cotton rag, let's say. And talking about fast drying, um, tongue oil, it's a drying oil. So if you compare it to a mineral oil, for example, you're using for cutting boards, mineral oil never, never really truly dries. If you take a few drops of mineral oil and put a piece of glass, because glass will not absorb it, and you come back a few weeks later, it's still goopy and wet, so it will never, never dry. Or if you take tongue oil and you put it on a piece of glass, you will come back, it will see kind of crusts up and it hardens. It doesn't harden like plastic, like poly, but it will harden like a hard wax. So those are some differences. Enough chatting, let's put this finish on.
you see how the grain really pops? Look at that. I love using tongue oil. Definitely one of my favorite finishes. If you have the time for it and you can put multiple coats and wait the proper time between coats, this is, this is gonna give you a really, really nice result. And it feels really nice to the touch. And this looks so pretty. I really love the combination between the canary wood and walnut. I mean, look at that. The light is not so great in the shop, but it truly is beautiful. Fun fact, as you guys are watching this uh, video, I will be in Nevis soaking in the sun, hopefully having a nice drink with an umbrella in it. Taking a 10 day vacation. And that's why I'm doing this video, so I have something to post while I'm away. Look at that. Look at this, you guys. Can you see that? So pretty. My first thought was to do one box with poly and one with the tang oil just so you guys can see the difference. But then I thought, why would I make something that is not as pretty with poly when I can make them both pretty with tongue oil? So there you go. Really brings in the grain. A little bit for soaking, not dry, soak. And I think we're ready to wipe off the first box. Wipe off the excess. You really don't want the tongue oil to just sit on the surface because if you don't wipe it off, it will dry shiny and not good looking. So we need to wipe it off. And again, make sure you dispose of your paper towels the proper way. You do not want to burn down your shop. And this is the way our boxes are looking. Still wet, I just finished putting the oil on it. My light is really not great in the shop, but I'm telling you that grain on the top is just beautiful. So you see, that's why I wanted to sit a little bit proud to the rabbit. It gives it a nice shadow line, just another design element. Super, super cute. So this is the walnut one with the canary stripe. As you can see, that's what it looks like. And then here is the canary one with the Walnut stripe, so really beautiful grain, the color. I think I have to get out of the frame so we'll focus on it. The reflection is really, really bad, but it's just beautiful. Super, super happy with the way they turned out. Like I said, I will be coming back tomorrow putting another coat of this uh, tongue oil sealer. And then when I come back from vacation, I will put another coat of the high luster tongue oil, polymerized tongue oil. And um, I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.